Medi Winterval to one and all. We're at Bard's Hospital, the site of the biggest PFI contract in Britain. And we're asking if this is going to be a good Christmas present for taxpayers. It better be, because we're going to be paying for it for the next 42 years. Let's remind ourselves how the private finance initiative works. First of all, it is debt. We taxpayers are on the hook for making payments 40 to 50 years into the future. But for various arcane government accounting reasons, it does not largely appear on the government's balance sheet. So Gordon Brown is able to massage the debt figures for golden rule purposes. It is Enron debt. Second, the total value is now of the order of £100 billion. Third, that is equivalent to roughly two pence on the standard rate of income tax for at least the next 40 years. Now the size of the debt is bad enough, but what makes it even worse is that large chunks of it are not actually going on useful things like hospitals at all. It turns out that the politicians and bureaucrats are spending whole great chunks of PFI debt on themselves. Let's take a trip down to Whitehall and I'll show you what I mean. We're starting off in front of the Minister of Defence in Whitehall. According to the National Audit Office, the refurbishment of the Ministry of Defence headquarters building is costing us under a PFI contract no less than three quarters of a billion pounds. But of course, this is the same Ministry of Defence that this week has been heavily criticised for scrimping on the minor cost of body armour for our troops in Iraq. Well, we've run into a bit of a snag because for the second time in a week, I've been stopped from videoing in Westminster by the police using their powers under the 2000 Terrorism Act and their stop and search powers. So we're going to have to find another way of doing it. I think it's time for a bit of secret filming. I'm sitting on the top deck of a number 11 bus. I've been told that if I sit here and look anonymous, I may just be able to slip it is about to strike 13 and we're back in the forbidden zone. It's amazing to think that not long ago really quite ordinary people could come up here to petition their rulers. These days of course the commissars have closed the entire area to all but the ruling elite so we must glimpse what we can from the top deck of the number 11 with our noses pressed against the window. So as we catch this glimpse of the Ministry of Truth, let's note that the dysfunctional, not fit for purpose Home Office has spent 311 million of our money on a new headquarters for itself. And even the Treasury, which is supposed to safeguard our funds, has spent 170 million on its new headquarters. And these projects are going on all over Britain from Big Brother Central GCHQ in Cheltenham spending another half a billion on offices, to National Traffic Control, 160 million, Department of Work and Pensions in Newcastle, 163 million. On my reckoning, if you add it all up and throw in the cost of that new nameplate for the fact, you find that our politicians and bureaucrats have spent nearly two billion quid of our money on new offices for themselves. No wonder he's looking so chirpy. So are we going to get good value from the redevelopment of Barts and all those other PFI contracts? Well, truth to tell, just like everything else connected with our increasingly secretive Big Brother government, it's very difficult for ordinary taxpayers to find out. But what we do know is that the Public Accounts Committee has issued a whole string of very critical reports on the poor value we're getting out of PFI contracts. And we also know that the Health Commissar herself, Patricia Hewitt, tried to get the Barts project canned earlier this year because she was worried about the cost. In fact, she only let it go ahead when it was explained to her she would incur a £100 million cancellation charge if she chopped it. Even so, a dithering and delay has cost us an extra £35 million on top of the £1.1 billion contract. Happy Christmas, everyone.